this is uh, this is Barbara Schlein's front yard here. Uh, Barbara is uh, uh, one of the ladies that in the past has had me work with her landscape. We've got a nice drought tolerant landscape going on out here with lavenders and all kinds of succulents and stuff. But Barbara herself is an artist and she works with mosaics. Um, Barbara, I see you've got a row of uh, paving stones out here in the front yard. Um, then they're all decorated on top with stuff. Could you tell me a little bit about them and how they ended up becoming this way? Well, the garden was uh, muddy and wasn't grown up yet, and I thought, well, stepping stones would be a nice addition to my garden. Mm -hmm. And so I started with uh, adding tiles, and I had a plate that I broke and made into a stepping stone. So hang on now, you're telling me that like some of these over here are made from broken plates, huh? That's right. This this particular one was an antique plate that I thought was attached to the wall and it fell down and I found it one morning broken and I thought it's too pretty to throw out so I made it into a stepping stone for my garden. So that's kind of like uh, you get a lemon, squeeze it and make lemonade, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I see so you got all kinds of features out here. That must be a rattler right there, huh? Yeah, that's a snake. Now that's not a broken plate. That's made from what? Well, that's made from broken tiles, colored oh. tiles. But actually the red outline uh, around the edge is a broken plate. Hmm. Hmm. And it made a nice rounded edge. And I added some gems to it, those little shiny things to And so the ne it up. next one there looks like some kind of friendly fish, huh? It's a fish and the background is broken tile and actually I think the whole thing is pretty much broken tile except for the edge that was uh, some tile that I bought. I like that sun it. back there. That's very cheery. The colors are uh, really southwestern looking. Yeah. I made them all different. I thought that each one should have its own personality. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't repeat any. And so I see you've got a ground cover growing out there around those uh, stepping stones. Uh, not too much trouble keeping it off there. That's the elfin thyme, I guess? That's elfin thyme and yeah. it, it's a drought resistant uh, plant and it looks pretty all year round. Well, let's take a walk down your path here and see where it tees because you got some other ones here. So these uh, um, these stepping stones, uh, these were the, uh, the first of the mosaics you yes, were doing? Yes, I, I started out with stepping stones. Well, okay. These are real nice. The, then the, the core of the stepping stone is just the plain old 12 inch round uh, concrete stepping stone you find in right. the usual uh, building Richard supply stores. Is, yeah. is where I got most of these, but uh, you know, a lot of stores do have them, a lot of the supply stores. So anyway, I've enjoyed it. And this, so I completed all this and I have some th in the other parts of my garden too where I need stepping stones. Well, this lavender smells real good over here. Yeah, the bees love it. Yep. They're just uh, going crazy for it. Yeah. I went to see Van Gogh exhibit uh, in the Impressionist Museum. Or the, There was a show that had Impressionist paintings and Van Gogh had Starry Night, and I thought that that would be a good subject for a ball. And so this is a San Francisco Starry Night. Well, I had a, a lot of fun making that. That's a pretty amazing thing. It does. You can see the the influence of Van Gogh in there, and uh, then uh, we've got uh, uh, what's that? Transamerica Building? Is that the pyramid? Yes, the Transamerica yeah, yeah. Building. Um, uh -huh. Just that's kind of the Embarcadero side of it, and so, the other side uh, has the Golden Gate Bridge. And this here, that would be uh, Koi Tower, yeah. Koi Tower. How yeah. about that? Yeah, go ahead, turn that around then for anyway, us. Here's, uh, here's the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, that's that's pretty fascinating. I really like this one. You had one, I think you did, that was a heart for a special reason, uh, didn't you? Yeah, I used the same design. I sent mm -hmm. it in to the parts of San Francisco for General Hospital fundraising, and mm -hmm. it was auctioned off in uh, San Francisco t to help the cardiac and emergency room there. So this one here, we got a, uh, a kind of a uh, end table or something here made out of an old uh, Trottle sewing machine, huh? Well, my father collected all these sewing machine bases, and I thought that uh, they needed better tops on them. Mm -hmm. So this particular one, I made a, a leaf top. And this is one of my favorites. This one I put in the county fair. This was one of the first ones that I made that, that was a picture, an actual picture. And so I um, entered this one in the fair mm -hmm. at Alameda County Fair. And yeah, I thought it was uh, a good appropriate topic for the fair. And it's, He's kind of cute. Well, it works out real nice out here with your vegetable garden because I guess... Uh, yeah, I've got corn yep. and tomatoes 
And I think there's some peas up here to oh, yeah. decorate the edge. That's a real nice rooster, and he's got a, a buddy down here on the other sewing machine table to keep him company. Yeah, huh? well, the gardens are, are kind of country, and I thought that that would be a good thing on my house. For that's a nice one. Bar. Yeah, we got another little one over here, and that's, so that's uh, flowers in a vase. Well, I guess? this is made out of bits and pieces of uh, kind of three dimensional glass. Hmm. And I just thought it would, would look nice like so this. So this one here, this looks like it's got to be a, a gobbler. Uh, it, it is. He's the guardian of my uh, my yard. He <laughs> sort of looks over the whole thing that's going that way. And he's sort of stepping proud. Okay. I, I really well, we have tons of turkeys now in California. We sure do. They're not a native bird. They kind of went wild. But uh, I bet. see them on the hills almost every day. So. Yeah, I really like the, uh, uh, the glass you used for the feathers on the breast. That came out really nice. Yeah. Well, I enjoy him. Was, uh, he was fun. And this particular piece of glass, I thought, when I looked at it, I thought it looked like a turkey neck. It's, oh, so you... That's what made me think of doing a turkey out here. So the inspiration was the shape of a piece of glass. Okay. That's right, yeah. yeah you never know how Some, that's going to work. Sometimes they huh? speak to you and tell you what you're going to do. Yeah, that's that is... Uh, that's not, not quite exactly what I'd expect to find out in the garden. It's a jellyfish on the wall, but, uh, I mean, we are next to the Pacific Ocean here. Well, and I bring it out in the sun. He, he reminds me. Glass, Ooh, that's beautiful. Which is um, meant for jewelry. And these are some pieces a friend had that didn't turn out. Well, it's the same kind of glass you've got on your necklace there, right? That's right. Same same lady. Wow, okay. So, so dichroic glass. It's called dichroic glass. Right Very through. cool. Yeah, so yeah, it reminds me of the... Uh, in the sun. Almost all of these look really good in the sun. Sparkle. Yeah, they sparkle and shine. You get the bling. Yeah, it reminds me of the jellies at the, uh, the Monterey Aquarium. That's where I had been before this, and I thought, well, I'd like to do one. Now they're just little, well, it looks little like, bobbles of glass. Looks like glass pasta, but actually, since that is supposed to be a clownfish. <laughs> That's the name of it. Noodles. Yeah, they're glass noodles. This is a clownfish, <laughs> and I thought, what kind of a background? And Demetria told me, use the noodles. So well, a clownfish rests in an anemone to lure other fishes in. So That's that, what it's supposed to represent. It looks like anemone tentacles. Yeah. Another fun guy to make this. And so the glass gave me the inspiration here, the uh, pretty kind of ripply. I see. Glass. So again, we were inspired by the piece to get started on uh, on the um, on the image. Huh? Yeah, the glass kind of tells you what it wants to be. Well, this was a bunch of leftover glass. Uh huh. You know, when you start making a lot of glass things, you have leftovers, and so I thought, well, I'll take all the leftovers and and uh, make something with them. And so this is. Uh, some butterflies and well, it's butterflies some, and posies. And flowers. That's, that's and nice. It's just uh, Italian glass squares for the background. Well, that's very cool. Which was kind of inexpensive. So then we've got one over here, which is uh, quite recent, right? This is my latest one, mm -hmm. and I don't plant right in there. I usually drop a pot. This pot is dropped down in there mm -hmm. to keep the. Uh, keep it from seeping out and I do line them with kind of an asphalt tar liner mm -hmm. so that they're waterproof. Mm -hmm. um, this particular one, a um, man named Cheeky, which is fam he's famous for mosaics, made these different beaks and so I made a, a lot of birds you know, using those beaks. So anyway, I enjoyed making this one. This one I made just for fun, just for me. And then uh, down there at your feet, uh, we got a, a a dog with yellow daisies all over it. Is that what I'm seeing? Yes, this was one of this was the first pot I made actually, and uh, this particular dog I think is at Pompeii. They used to mosaic the entrances to their houses, uh -huh. and they put a watchdog there. And this was a kind of a copy, although I call him the pineapple dog because he's not. So you you saw the dog in Pompeii on vacation then? Is what yes, you're saying? Yes, I did see it, and but. It also online. Oh wow. And he's, he's kind of cute. So yeah, he is. He's uh, chasing a mouse, actually. <laughs> and the cat is on the other side chasing the mouse. They're both trying to get it. <laughs> and uh, we're still waiting for the dahlias up in the top of the pot to come to bloom this year. Right. Huh? I think there was a thought that uh, you have to have a plain pot and your flowers were going to be the whole show. Mm -hmm. But I think that you have to have the, both, the best of both worlds, right? you got to have well. a good pot and good plant and flowers. I know before I before I left the nursery business uh, that that was the saying it's a uh, um, a $30 plant and a $200 pot these days. 
<laughs> you know, that the plant is just kind of, uh, uh, is inconsequential really compared to the container you put it in. The container is the architectural statement, right. you know. Well, you can make your own pots. And yeah. It's a very fun thing to yep. do. There's the, the rest of my antique plate down there. <laughs> <laughs> and there was a, those are from a bowl. And then I have the, the family of uh, chickens, the rooster, the chicks. And the mother hen, they're over Here. there. And well, the chicks are cute. Kind of chasing each other around in a circle on the stone there, are they? Yeah. That's neat. Ooh, golden raspberries, blackberries. Blackberries are coming on. Looks like if there's a ripe one up there, that's the first. Blackberries on iron trellises. Uh, well, those, actually, those uh, trellises are um, guardrails. I'll be darned. That were at my in-law's house, and they took down the upper story uh, outdoors and the guardrails make good um, climbing areas for plants. Sure do. Look like they were made for this job. Yeah. And they think they're nice looking. Pretty neat. So that's, that's how we reuse them. That's called recycling. And we got uh, this one right here. This is succulents hanging straight off the fence on a board, huh? Well, it's hanging on one of those trellises that are made out of a guardrail. Mm -hmm. And I've enjoyed that. It has a little uh, drip system in it to keep it moist. But it, it's really drought resistant. It looks very nice. Yes. And it's been here, I think, a year now. Wow, it's growing in really well. Yeah. A little bit of Darwinism. Some of the stuff put in isn't growing as well as others, but the stuff that's taken off is doing really well and yeah. filling in. Yeah. Medusa's head right there is pretty neat. I like that. Yeah, that one really took off. I was uncertain how it was going to do out here. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little surprised that all these things seem to be competing reasonably well in there. There's a lot of different <laughs> size succulents and different natures. Well, we tried everything out to see what would do well. and well, That's how it works. Looks like a lot of them did well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> so I don't have it there now. <laughs> So this is one of my favorites. I really like this one. The uh, It's a vase of flowers uh, you have there, right? Yeah, this is uh, one of the first that I made also for outside. Wow. This whole side of, the, of my house is blank. And so I thought that it needed some something interesting. And pots that are here always dry out. It's too hot. Mm -hmm. The heat bounces off the house. And so I made my own flowers growing over here. <laughs> well, you know, this is such a great idea because uh, back when I worked in the store and we used to have to recommend plants for people, folks would tell me about, oh, I got this spot and the sun beats down all afternoon. I haven't got any water over there and so on. And they go, what can I plant there? And I go, good place for a rock. <laughs> You know, or a, or a mosaic. That's right. It's Here we have place for a mosaic. <laughs> exactly. We have mosaic flowers, so we got yeah. the best of both worlds there. Mm -hmm. uh, artwork will really take up. You don't have to water it. That's the beauty. No. Yeah. No. This is actually under the eaves, it, but mosaics will take the uh, rain and weather because they're cement, mm -hmm. and then this is glass, and then the grout is also a type of cement. So it can take the full uh, weather. So you've been pretty careful to make sure that you're using materials that are pretty durable for this so application. We've got a few yeah. other people's artwork here too, huh? We've got a little sculpture well, over I there. Yeah, I, I thought the sculpture was nice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a lot of color. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think I enjoy color, so that's why I switched to. Yeah, it's things. just and nice and organic, that one. You've got yeah, to really I look it for is it. It's pretty. It's very pretty. Okay. And so then we got over here. Another one of your uh, 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 kind of free-floating objects. That one yeah, was a, was one a is just a, a cube. It's a solid piece of cement, actually. It was at my uh, in-laws' house, and I thought, <laughs> well, that'd make a, a good die. So that's what. Well, this is the uh, there's the piece of glass. Told me what it wanted to be, and it was this beautiful uh, piece here. And I thought it looked like a nautilus shell, and mm -hmm. so we have a. a a crab coming out of it. So it's a got, hermit crab. We have the hermit crab. Yeah, in, in, uh, in a nautilus shell, that'd be one sizable hermit crab. Yeah. Uh, good thing he's on a <laughs> he's a mural. <laughs> well, that's the way it yeah. is in the garden. Things have to be bigger than life. Right? That's right. Yep. It <laughs> sure is. Something too small. I mean, I think you ought to make a statement if you're going to have something in your garden. You shouldn't have it too small. That's true. Yeah, things get lost out here. I mean, my goodness, you got so much going on. 
uh, these clematis over here billowing all over oh, the place. Oh, I know. They just went crazy. I, I didn't. I thought the plant had died. I had it actually for about five years, <laughs> and it grew up struggling every year. And one last year, it just got huge. Yeah. And this year again, it's gotten huge. Oh, it's so looking great. I'm um, not sure what happened, but it goes well with the uh, with the hermit crab. Yeah, they, they like one another. <laughs> Alrighty, well this this has really been a joy. I uh, thank you very much for letting us tour your garden out here and showing me your oh, artwork. I, I enjoy showing showing my things. Okay, so uh, we'll have to see if we come back during harvest season and we'll check out those tomatoes later on. Alright, sounds good. Alright, thanks a lot, Barbara. All right.